Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. Today we are talking about the strain gauge. The strain gauge is one of the most spread, uh, the most used uh, things to measure to measure uh, strain. Okay, because we said when we measure more force or torque, yeah, we measure actually we want to measure the strain and then we can get back to to the force, the applied force, huh? to the stress and then to the force. So, uh, strain gauge, how is it basically working? Well, we know if we have some material, huh? just draw some material, with a certain length, with a certain diameter or area, okay, so we have here an area A, yeah, and we have here a certain length. This has some resistance, okay? Electrical resistance, depending on the material we are working with, and this resistance of this, yeah, here, resistance is. L multiplied by rho divided by A. Yeah. L is the length, A is the area. All right. And rho, what's this rho? Rho is the resistivity. Spezifischer Widerstand in German resistivity. How much resistance this material has by meter? And square meter. Okay? So that's a material constant. However, we could also write this is L divided by A multiplied by gamma, yeah? and this gamma is the conductivity. It's just 1 divided by rho. Yeah? So those two things are depending on the material, all right? And now, now we apply force to this, okay? Now we apply force to this. How does it look like? Well, if we apply force, this thing will get longer. The volume will stay the same, right? This thing will get longer. Uh, it's now, I'm drawing it now extreme. Yeah? So here we have suddenly the area is smaller, A2, and the length L2, I'll write here L1. Huh? This is just because we applied here force. And to keep it in balance, I apply here the same force. Right? Bang! This is strain. We talked about this. You remember? Boom, boom. Yeah? Strain. Now, what is happening to the resistance? Well, we have a smaller area. This smaller area causing bigger resistance. We have longer length. This longer length causing bigger resistance. So the resistance is going to get bigger. Okay? And this is exactly how a strain gauge is working. Okay, this is exactly how a strain gauge is working. Um, apply strain to it, measure the resistance. If you measure the change of the resistance, then this is according according the the length change change. Okay, so there is this relationship that we have somewhere. Delta R, this is the resistance change divided to in R0. Uh, R0 is the original resistance this thing had before applying the force. Uh, and this is some constant multiplied by the strain. All right? So this K, this is called sensitivity factor. So this describes 
how sensitive, how much resistance change. Yeah? So this delta R is the change of resistance. And this R0 is the original. Resistance. Huh? So this K describes you know, uh, how, how much change that can be applied. Huh? If I want to have a good measurement, I want to have a big change, right? I want to have a big change in, in the resistance, so this K should be as high as possible. There is always a balance. There are several materials of what uh, Strain gauge is, is uh, manufactured. Huh? Let's see how a strain gauge really looks like physically. Okay, so this is the principle. Huh? We're measuring the resistance. These resistance changes are usually very small. So we have to take care that there is a lot of resistance change. How we do that? Huh? Well, we have some base material. Here's the base material. I'll draw it here also. This is the base material. Here in the top view, here from the front view. Okay, very thin material. Yeah. Here, somewhere, we have the surface we apply. Huh? This is the application surface here. We also draw it. Application surface. Here, I want to measure the resistance. Ah, the resistance. The force. The stress. The strain. This is our workpiece we want to measure. This is glued, yeah? so there is some glue. Yeah. This is a special glue, this really sticks, yeah? and this really can uh, translate or, or bring the forces in here also. So this really sticks, yeah? so this is glue. And this is some base. Base material. Okay. And now I apply our, our lines to it. Okay. How do I do this? Yeah. I want to have a lot of resistance change. So I make it like that. Yeah. That I make a lot of tiny, tiny oh, this is shaky here, this is the so-called measurement grid uh, this is somewhere here located the measurement grid. This grid consists of different materials, yeah? so with different case here. Yeah? Usually those parts are a little bit thicker, yeah? so that we have a defined So that we have a defined direction. So in this direction, this strain gauge will not measure anything. In this direction, the strain in this direction, this will be translated very good because there we have a lot of length on small room. This is because we made this zigzag pattern. All right. And here we have some connection. Huh? 
uh, connection pad. Here we can connect. Sometimes it's even outside, so there are then you can weld something. Uh, weld, solder, not weld, <laughs> solder something. Yeah, and that's it. That's actually what is necessary for measurement. However, there will also be a protective layer. Okay, so up here, here we have a protective layer. Because this is very delicate, you know, by a tiny, tiny grid. Huh? And we have this protective layer to protect this a little bit. And usually, huh, there is not only the protective layer, but if you make an application, huh, so you stick this to the whatever you want to measure, yeah, you really have to take care that there is no, no, you know, coating. Yeah? On this material, you really, really have to grind uh, away every coating and then really stick this to the material. No paint or something like this in between. Yeah? This glue has to be at the material. And then we want to protect this, and there is also some protective material around it. Yeah? This is Looking like that, uh, so usually we have there protection mass. Uh, so mass which is simply smeared on there, it's not conductive or anything, just to protect it physically. Alright, so this is a strain gauge. Uh, this is how a strain gauge looks like. Uh, different material, different case. I will write down now some materials. Yeah. So there is, for instance, Constantin. This is a mixture between copper, nickel, and mangan. Uh, this is a K of 2.05. Uh, this is K value. Then we have Karma, it's called, also special mixture of copper, chrome and aluminium. Yeah? This is 2.1. Then we have Nichrome, we. This is Nickel, Chromium, this is 2.2. Oh, you see, these, these are typical values, typical values. Chromol, this is nickel, iron, and chrome, this is 2.5, yeah. platin tungsten, this is PT and tungsten of course, yeah. <laughs> 4.0, yeah. platin, six dot zero. These are metallic things, all right. But then we have also not metallic, yeah, non-metallic materials. There might be, for instance, positive P silicium. Okay, here we have eighty. To 190, Woo. much more than here, much more than so this and and then we have n silicium, yeah? n silicium minus 25 up to 100, yeah? so these are semiconductors. And these are metals here. Now, I said big K is beneficial. <laughs> Here we have 80 to 190, but it's a range. Yeah? These things here are not linear. 
why they are not linear? Because in semiconductors there is not only the form changing, however there is also the resistivity or the conductivity changing because of the form. All right? So it's non-linear. We have a high resistance change but not linear. Here we have quite linear resistance change but not that high. Yeah? So the usual ones are still metal yeah? because we want to measure linear yeah? and then we have to measure more accurate. All right. So now I have explained how a strain gauge is working and I guess everybody of us now has something in mind how this looks in real. Yeah? And I show you now a real strain gauge and you will be disappointed. Here this is the box. See, this is the box. Open. By the way, in the back we have here for instance written, okay, base resistance 120.5, so this is this R0. Yeah? And then we have a K factor of 2.02. Yeah? So we are here somewhere. Yeah? Typical. So let's open this. This is a strain gauge. This little thing is a strain gauge. I guess you've imagined them bigger, right? There are also bigger ones. Right, come out, come go. Don't be shy, don't be shy. This Ooh, dropped it. He. This is a strain gauge. It's not that big, right? So I'll try to focus here a little bit. You cannot even see the grid. Huh? The grid you can see if you really look at it and, and look through, then you see a tiny, 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 tiny grid inside there. Huh? But that's actually it. Huh? This is how a strain gauge looks like in real. Not that big, right? Yeah. So. Tiny things. Tiny changes. Right? So, how do we measure those tiny changes in... How do we measure those tiny changes in resistance? Well, there are, or there is a usual method called Wheatstone Bridge. Right? What a Wheatstone Bridge is and how this is working, how we can use it to to measure the resistance change of our, our strain gauges. I will explain in the next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.